Welcome. Welcome to Google I.O. So today, we are announcing the Google Assistant. We think of the Assistant in a very specific way. We think of it as a conversational assistant. Who directed the Revenant? The Revenant was directed by Alejandro Gonzalez in Eritu. Show me his awards. Notice that I didn't say the name, which I'm glad because I find that name very, very hard to pronounce. What's playing tonight? And by the way, today, if you ask that question, we do return movie results, but we want to go a step further. I should be able to look at it and maybe tell Google we want to bring the kids this time. And then if that's the case, Google should refine the answer and suggest family-friendly options. And maybe even ask me, would you like four tickets to any of these? And if I say, sure, let's do Jungle Book, it should go ahead and get the tickets and have them ready waiting for me when I need it. We think of the assistant as an ambient experience that extends across devices. This is why we're creating Google Home. With Google Home, we set out to create and design a beautiful product that's warm and inviting and fits naturally in many areas of the home. We'll give you the option to customize the base with different colors and finishes, including metal and fabric, to reflect your home style. This is Google Home. Google Home is a Wi-Fi speaker that streams music directly from the cloud so you get the highest quality playback. Of course, you can access songs, playlists, albums, artists, and podcasts from your favorite music services just by asking with your voice. Or if you prefer, you can send music from your Android or iOS device uh, to, to, through Google Cast. So when you want to listen to Coldplay in the living room speak, on the living room speakers, you can simply say, play Viva La Vida in the living room, and it'll start playing. And it lets you control your video content too. Let's say that you want to watch that episode of Jimmy Kimmel or the trending YouTube video on your TV. Just tell Google Home and the content will appear on the biggest, brightest screen in your house. You can do the basics like setting alarms and timers or managing to-do lists and shopping lists. We're also designing Google Home to connect your smart home seamlessly. It will support the most popular home networking systems so that you can easily control your lights, thermostats, switches, and more. But what makes Google Home really shine is that it has search built in. You might ask, how much fat is in an avocado? Or what is Draymond Green's jersey number? And then follow up that last question with, where did he go to college? Enjoy music and entertainment throughout your entire house, manage everyday tasks effortlessly, and ask Google what you want to know. Allo is a smart messaging app. It learns over time to make conversations easier, more expressive, and more productive. We designed Allo to help you express yourself. So I'm going to type yay and throws a smiley face in there. Now watch, rather than tapping the send button, he slides it down to whisper and slides it up again to shout. It's also fun to add emotion to your photos. And Ink lets you get creative with the photos you send. Amit's picked a photo of his adorable baby girl and wrote Ahoy on the little sailor. Posted it, it's that simple. We've taken a page from the Inbox playbook and built Smart Reply right into your chat conversations. Al even offers Smart Replies when people send photos to you. When Joy sends a photo of pasta, we're able to identify the precise details of the image and create smart replies mentioning both the linguine and the clams. The assistant intelligently recognizes that they could use some tips for Italian restaurants nearby. Tapping this brings up restaurant cards that everyone in the chat can see. And it looks like they're leaning towards Cucina at 7 o'clock. So Amit can now go ahead and make a reservation right there through Open Table. And he's going to ask for funny cat pics. Really, Amit? OK. Cool. So Google obliges. So what we're seeing now is Amit's contact list. And Google's appearing at the top there. So let's jump in and have a chat. Amit's a big Real Madrid fan, and he wants to know how they got on in their last match. 
So we asked the assistant, did my team win? Looks like they did. But let's go ahead and tap on their roster. There we go, we have a carousel with all their top talent. Okay, there he is, Mr. Ronaldo. So Amit only has to type best tricks and the assistant understands the context and that he means Ronaldo's best tricks and responds with a YouTube video. So I'd like to introduce you to Duo, a simple one-to-one -one video calling app for everyone. Duo is the video, call video companion to Allo. It's fast and performs well even on slow networks. But here's a feature that makes Allo really special. We call it Knock Knock. And once you pick up, Duo puts you right into the call, seamlessly transitioning from the live preview to the live call. So let's take a look. I'm getting a call from my daughter, Ava. I haven't even picked up yet, but Ava's right there, smiling and making funny faces. I can tell she's really eager to talk, so let's answer it. Hi, Dad. Hi, Ava. Hi, Elena. <laughs> Both Allo and Duo will be available this summer on Android and iOS. So let's talk about what's new in the platform. With the end release, we wanted to achieve a new level of product excellence. So we set about redesigning and rewriting many fundamental aspects of how the system works. We've proved, improved performance in N in two key areas, graphics and runtime. We're making our biggest leap forward with the introduction of Vulkan. Vulkan is a modern 3D graphics API designed to give game developers direct control of the GPU to produce incredible graphics and compute performance. App installs are much faster, 75% faster in N. Let's talk about another big area of focus for us, security. With N, we're continuing to strengthen our defenses in three key ways. First, and introduces file-based encryption. We learned the importance last year of hardening the security of the media framework. And automatically keeps your phone up to date with the latest version of the system software without you having to do anything. Also, based on popular demand, we finally added a clear all button at the top. Yeah, feels good. But my absolute favorite feature is something that we call Quick Switch. You can now flip to the previous app you're in just by double tapping the Recents button from anywhere. I can long tap on the Recents button to enter multi-window, and from there launch something like Google Keep, for example. Now I can update my shopping list for ingredients while I'm watching the video. Daydream is our platform for high-quality mobile virtual reality, and in it are all of the ingredients you need to create incredible immersive VR experiences. And there are three parts to it. The smartphones themselves including VR optimizations to Android N, a reference design for a headset and a controller, and apps, both how you get them through Google Play and the apps themselves. We've created a set of phone specifications for VR. We call phones that meet these specs daydream ready. Now, it's important. These improvements are part of the core of Android N so that the entire ecosystem can benefit. And what that means for developers is there are going to be a lot of Daydream-ready phones. In fact, Samsung, Alcatel, Asus, Huawei, HTC, LG, Xiaomi, and ZTE all will have smartphones that are compatible with the Daydream-ready spec, and several will be available this fall. So we've been working on a controller for Daydream. It looks like this. And if we actually zoom in a little bit, you can see the controller itself, it's very simple. There are a few buttons and a clickable touchpad so you can scroll and swipe. But hidden inside the controller is the magic. We've built an orientation sensor so it knows where it's pointing, how it's turning. We've built Google Play for VR. Users will be able to browse and search and buy and install VR apps in VR. Android Wear 2.0. Android Wear already has thousands of watch faces you can download. And now we're making them even more useful by letting any watch face show data from any app. Jeff has customized it with his calorie count from LifeSum, stock information from Robinhood, and his tasks from Todoist, enabling new ways to respond to messages designed just for your wrist. This includes Smart Reply that knows the context of your message, best-in-class handwriting recognition, and a new keyboard. And here's what it looks like when Jeff gets a message from a friend. He taps to reply, chooses handwriting input, and now he uses his finger to sketch big letters on the watch. 
the text is recognized automatically. And now she knows, with one more go, she knows that he'll be there at 3 p.m. We're improving the fitness experience with Google Fit Platform's automatic activity recognition. Second, your apps can exchange data using the Google Fit API. So information like calories consumed in a nutrition app can sync with calories burned in a running app. We're expanding the ways you can enjoy listening to music while you work out, even when you leave your phone behind. No need to strap your phone in an awkward armband. And thanks to the hardware sensors on your watch and automatic activity recognition, apps like Strava will start tracking your time and distance when you start running. And if you enjoy music while working out, you can launch Spotify right from your watch face. And the best part of all of this, you don't even need a phone. In fact, when Jeff was showing you the demos, his phone was turned off. And everything you saw here today, from sending messages to streaming music, worked on just his watch. Thank you for joining us at Google I.O.